Hi everybody, it's September 8th, 2019, and it is a beautiful day in Central Virginia. We're making a video today, and it happens to be my birthday, <laughs> and I want to say a special thanks to all the kind words I've received from so many people on online and at church and all the hugs and everything. I even got an international happy birthday from our... Uh, Bernie. From uh, our friend Bernie Egerton in London, in England. Yes, from England, Bernie in Eng England. Thank you so much. That was so kind of you, and I'll probably start driving on the left side of the road now. <laughs> but thank you so much. And anyway, I want to show you my new toy. This was made by a fellow down in Louisiana named Channing. He's a right doing guy. He hand makes these out of power paracord, and his website and all is practical paracord so if you want to see a guy throw a rock with this it's a rock swing see him he's very good i got a long ways to go but i thought i'd get one and he made this and the craftsmanship is outstanding here he's a very thoughtful man and i thought i'd go ahead and give it a try and now i'll do one for you this is a, <laughs> com a perfect opportunity for me to make a complete fool of myself I've been practicing off and on for a couple weeks, but I bought this for myself for my birthday. It's a primitive weapon. Basically. What are you putting in it? A rock. Okay. This is David and Goliath stuff. Okay, where's the rock? In my hand. <laughs> <laughs> and you, put, you put this on like this. Mm -hmm. See how he made it with a little pad and everything? This is good, good stuff here. And then you sling it, tighten this. Okay. If you're right-handed, you use your right hand. If you left hand, then you put this hand like this. So what you're going to do is swing it, and when you're ready, you let go of this end, and then the rock goes sailing off for me, who knows where. You're not going to hit me with it, are you? I'm, I'm going to try to avoid <laughs> harming myself and others. And, uh, well, let me just do it. Yeah, just do it. He calls it the smiling sling, because, see... It's got a smile. Mm -hmm. That goes on the outside. X marks the spot, like he says, on the inside. See, Channing, I told you that Sam loved his sling. Uh -huh. <laughs> then you Oops. drop it on the ground. Ooh, that's a sharp rock, too. Every, all the rocks. Okay, don't hit any of the foosters. Aim for the bamboo forest, which I don't know if you folks can see. There it is down there at the end of the, the clearing. Put the okay, rock one, in the pouch. Okay, put the rock in the pouch. Go find some giant philistines. <laughs> giant philistines? Yeah, I'm going to step back a little bit. Yeah, please do. And then you take it. <laughs> wow, that one went a long way. I like the little whip sound at the end of it. Yeah, see what Channing does is he puts this little tail on there. Uh -huh. He calls that a cracker. And that's what makes that little whip crack. I sound. like that. And I think it adds a great dimension. Uh-huh. Hi, Lump. And one good, the thing I like about this is here in central Virginia in the foothills of the Blue Ridge, we have no shortage of ammunition for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you put it in there. Watch out. Come on. Watch out, Dolly. Come on. Oh, you're getting really good with that. It's going really a long way. Yeah, it'll go. And what is your theory for using this, other than just to have fun with it? Uh, I can run off... Critters? Bad critters. But as you see in the video, uh, I've, I've had to go to other means. But that's it for the sling. Thanks again to Channing. Go see his channel. See his videos and all. You'll be impressed. He's, mm -hmm. he's a very kind, entertaining fellow. So hats off to you, Channing. Sam wanted to say a few words to you. Now we're going to go on a little garden tour, but he was so thrilled with his uh, sling. He wanted to make sure we. I'm practicing. Uh, yeah, not we as much gave... as I should, <laughs> but I, I'm I'm continuing. We gave Channing the kudos. Here yeah. we go. We'll go to the next part. Well, now for the garden portion of our video. <laughs> it's late summer and things are starting to wind down. Uh, this is the summer squash. On the left here is the second planting. On the right is the first planting. We're still getting some. Yeah, and what I've done with this, I, most people's squash is dead by now. These were planted in May, 
and usually they they just poop out. They get powdery mildew. They get bugs. So I've tried something new this year. I've tried neem oil. N e e m. You can find it in most garden centers, Walmart and whatnot. It's usually at a 70 percent, and it smells kind of like horse fly spray. And it's you know all politically correct and organic and gluten free and all that. <laughs> you know, but anyway, the uh, it. I wanted to do a kind of a field trial for myself, and I'm pretty pleased with the results. It's pretty much cleaned up the powdery mildew nicely, and um, you don't have to worry about poisoning yourself or anybody else with it. It does kill bugs, and it does kill mites, too, so it's kind of a triple threat there. I actually mixed it with a little insecticide, too, and that I did a compatibility test first. That means mix it all together and see what happens. If it... If nothing bad happens, use it. Anyway, so the, we, we've done good on our summer squash. Now over here, these are Cosmos, and I saved the seed off of those. That's what this is. This is a seed head. Their seeds are long and narrow. This is a group of them. There's an individual one. And you just go by with an envelope or a manila folder and just crush them just kind of pull them a little bit and then you take them in the wind like that and it blows off the the stuff you don't need and you got seed for next year it's easy it's cheap and you get a lot of it we're moving right along this is where the cucumbers are they're done the we're, deer ate a lot of them but I kept the bugs off them they produced real good for us this year I was I was pleased mm -hmm. but this time, late summer, things to nest. You can see over there, the corn's starting mm -hmm. to brown out and everything. And, you know, you know, to everything, there is a season. And now's the time when things to nest, and that means get old and die. There's one lonely cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. We got Marcy's lima beans over here, which... I don't know. But they look good, though. I mean, the, there's flowers. The plants look great. I don't know if the deer are eating them. Up. The, the deer have been, and I'll yeah. get back to that, quite a troublesome lot this year, more so than ever. But we got some on there. Mm-hmm. And Lots of I think, um, I think some of it was the hotter weather. A lot of plants don't pollinate when you have a heat wave. So mm -hmm. the cooler temperatures, now that we're coming into fall, should bring them on. We'll get something out of it. But you can see the watermelons didn't do much because mm -hmm. at a critical stage, this is very sandy soil here. The creek is right over there. Yeah. At, at one time, the creek, maybe 100 years ago, was here. And all this soil is very sandy, so it dries out quick. But I planted a watermelon there, which probably wasn't the best choice. But after last year, when it rained five out of seven days all summer. Yeah. Well, they would have been in the bay is where they would have been. But you know what? I said, every year we try something different. Eh, you plant your seeds, you take your chance. <laughs> but one of our good stories has been our pepper plant. Mm-hmm. They're huge. They've There's been... even more. I just dehydrated a bunch today. There's a whole bunch of oh them on here. Oh, my gosh. Now, this pepper is kind of cool because I saved the seed from these, and mm -hmm. I think this is a hybrid that kind of happened when a jalapeno and a Hungarian got together because mm -hmm. it's got the shape and the green tint of the jalapeno but Hungarians are usually long yellow mm -hmm. banana peppers but they got some nice heat to them they're a beautiful plant wow. and they're tasty and these are like what are these they're like those are the same thing same thing mm -hmm. when you save seeds sometimes uh, different factions get together and you get some weird little kids gosh I thought I was had taken care of all those no. peppers. Well, you took care of the ones that I picked, but they're coming on a little bit. These are bell peppers, purple bell. Those purples are good. They're real sweet. They're like a regular bell pepper, but they're purple. Uh -huh. And they're good to eat. But they've done well. See, we got some bell peppers here. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah, that's a nice one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we making still have out a lot all right of on these. Well, that's good. I'm I'm very I'm very pleased with these. These are uh, jalapenos. You can see oh, yeah. some of them in there. Mm-hmm. I just picked these late last week, so they're as you can see, they got flowers on them. Mm-hmm. If they got weather, they'll be fine. They'll make some more. 
Well, you get your good. money's worth out of those seeds because if you do right, you can get a lot of food out of there. Well, we're here at the sweet potato and tomato patch. This patch was heavily assaulted by deer. They jumped over and they got through my fence a little bit. What you see, you're saying, Sam, that's disgusting. That's so <laughs> unlike you to have so many weeds. And I go, well, yeah, there should have been nothing but sweet potatoes here. But the deer kept eating the sweet potatoes. There's still probably some in there. Well, I can see them uh -huh. between the weeds. We'll we'll let the frost burn the weeds down, then we'll dig and see if there's much in there. But the deer love sweet potatoes, and they just assaulted the hound out of them this year. So next year, electric fence. Mm -hmm. Electric fence, and I got to remember, I got more bullets than there are deer, so that's not a problem. We'll go look at the tomatoes. Well, we're here at the tomato patch, and we went through a a spell where the deer... Look at these plants. I should be down here pick with... Yeah, they're huge. I should be down here with Let a pickup truck. Let me stand back so they can get a... Well, it's kind of hard to get a grip uh -huh. of them. It's all tomatoes, people. Yeah, there's about 40 of them. And <laughs> I'm not getting any tomatoes because the deer have been eating them green right off the plant. But I put this bird net around them a uh -huh. few weeks ago, so I think we're going to have a have a late crop. Look I got that big one right there. Yeah, I got that idea from uh, the grape growers around here. They put uh, hay wrap. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what hay wrap is, uh, come see me at the co-op and I'll sell you some. <laughs> and uh, so this will, it's working. And we, we, we got a few today and hopefully we'll, we'll get a bountiful harvest out of here because it's a pretty important crop for us. Mm -hmm. Marcine cans them, we dehydrate them, you know, things like all the tomato sauce, everything. Hey, we use them a lot. Yeah, we use them all through the winter, all se every mm -hmm. season. But the plants look great, don't they? Everybody yeah, they else do. The plants <laughs> around here are, you are know, brown. Look, look like that, but... What? Oh, the brown down the yeah. bottom? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, every year, and but film lump lump. This one here. Hi, Lumpy. This is Lump Lump Dog. He's uh, my youngest son's dog. She is. She. <laughs> and she's turned into quite the deer hound. She'll set up on the Hi, hill Lumpy. and watch for him and run him off. So she's, yeah, she's been really good with chasing deer off. And they can be twice her size and sometimes three times her size and she'll still chase them. Yeah, but she's scared to death of Dennis the cat. I know. But anyway, we'll go look at pumpkins and winter squash now. Okay. But but we're gonna try. We'll uh, we'll if the harvest comes through, we'll post pictures of that because I've had to work for every one of these I've got. Mm -hmm. But of course, this year also, I got the biggest tomato I ever grow. Yeah. At two and a third pounds, and it was perfect. It was. It was delicious. So there's always adversity. But I will shoot the deer if if they persist. No. I mean, Lord might not want us to have tomatoes. We'll have venison instead. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> who can question? Let's go see the winter squash and pumpkins. It's quite dramatic. Welcome to the winter squash patch. This is going to be our gold star achievement <laughs> for this year because a lot of things just didn't pan out like we did. We did good on most stuff, but... Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. We got this. He's big. That's called a kashaw. A kashaw. It's a type of pumpkin. One of our buddies at church named Sam. Also. Sam Rubel. Sam Rubel. He loves. I get the. I give him the biggest one every year because his wife makes him kashaw pudding and he likes it. And as you can see, we got butternut. You can see them. Mm-hmm. I could see these squash from the house. As the vines are dying away, you can see all the color out here. And we got pumpkins. We oh, got all kinds of weird stuff. Especially in. And there's some Hubbard in there too. I don't. I saw that. a couple back that way. That's Here's a, one. Yeah, that's a little one. That's a little one. This is a blue Hubbard. Usually they'll get about that yeah, big. Yeah, they still got some. They growing. look like a. They swallowed something. But we'll walk down where some cool stuff is. Yeah, just get the whole effect as you pan around. I don't know if I can get the color. The color is just all these things standing out. If I start down there, how long would you say this patch is? 
It's 120 feet. It's 120 feet long. So down at the other end is where he's talking about the unusual. Yeah, there's some cool stuff here. I got to show wow, you. Wow, look at that big butternut right there. That's long. It's huge. Where do you see the pink wow, banana? Wow, some of these are really long. See these? Pumpkins. Oh, these pumpkin color is so pretty. See, these are some nice hubbards here. Uh-huh. And these are uh, orange striped cachados. Sometimes you get them where they mix and you got some orange in with the green stripes. It's uh -huh. so pretty. And of course, over on this other side here, this is something maybe y'all are a little more familiar with, is the acorn squash. Yeah, there's some over here too. We got a ton of them. I'm going to try some of this um, some of this squash in my new Pampered Chef quick cooker. Now you plant your uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pink banana. No, over here's a pink banana. I thought that was a pink banana. My Good. gosh, they're like torpedoes. Oh my gosh, that thing is huge. This is a pink banana. It's it's it should be pink torpedo. Yeah, we should call them torpedo squash or, or pink baloney. Oh my goodness! But anyway, they're a lot like a butternut. I think they're sweeter. They're than very butternut. good. I think they're delicious. Mm -hmm. they, they're they very taste good. A whole lot like sweet potato and stuff. Wow! Do we have some big pumpkins? And these are our pumpkins. Wow! I just throw the seeds in here and there and. It looks like we're going to do okay. If anybody on social media is friends with Mike Bridget, who used to work with all of us at Payne's, um, let him know about this, because he liked to bring kids out for pumpkins later on when they're ready to pick. Um, but I don't have him on social media, but anyway. Okay, that's a big one. Yeah, and there's another one like it over there that's orange. Look how vibrant orange that is. It was called Big Red Warty. Thing. <laughs> is that what it's called? Yeah. Big I mean, red warty thing. Uh, clever name. Huh? Okay, how original. But it's too long Look to at write. this one. Look at the size of that pumpkin. Yeah, we're going to be getting that, these out of here next week, next <gasps> two weeks. Look at that one over there. I know, they're beautiful. Oh, man. People are going to go nuts over these. Yeah, they sure are. But these are. are really nice. I haven't grown that, that red one. Look at this acorn. It's beautiful. I haven't grown this before. Huh? The big red warty thing. But I think oh, it looks good. I can't wait to see how they taste. Yeah. They're ugly, so usually the ugly things taste really good, like oysters. Oh, I love fried oysters. Huh? But it turned I'm out so all right sure this about year, the right? raw ones. Hmm? Our, our shining star is the winter squash. That's right. And there's some yellow acorn. Uh -huh. Those are unusual. Yeah, those are cool. They're pretty. Now, the main thing that's really cool about this is that at church on the altar, the ladies like to have fall decorate. You can watch the seasons change just by looking at yeah. the altar. In the spring, it starts out with tulips and daffodils and goes through. And in the fall, of course, they they, they like to have some things like this. So I, let, I bring them a bunch, and they pick out what they want, and it's really beautiful. And it, it makes me feel pretty humble when they do that. So I like that. There it is. See, and you can see the tomatoes over there yep. and the corn. Mm -hmm. Everything's done well this year. And my year. raggly looking sweet potato patch. But I think we're going to get some out I'm of there. I'm really kind of ashamed about that. but uh, Because they couldn't. I don't see where they broke through that net to get in there. there. Oh, really? Yeah. They're so sneaky. Yeah, but they're not bulletproof. I know. Well, let, let, we'll go to the upper gardens now and look around. Hi everybody, we're back again. But anyway, these are our grapes. They're seedless Concord. They made good for us this year. We got a bun. We take them and we dry them and make raisins, and they're really good. Now I have a question. They fruited. The fruit's been harvested. Then I noticed there were flowers on here. And look at this. Are we getting more? <gasps> They've set a second crop on this one. Kidding! I don't know if I could see that with the. 
Oh my gosh, they're so cute. See, they've set a second crop. They sure have. Now, I don't know, I'm not a grape expert or anything. I know the basics. But is this normal? Any of y'all know anything about this? Do they bear a second crop? It, I've never seen it on grapes before. I've been around grapes here and there, but I guess I wasn't paying attention or something. But if any of y'all know the answer to that, let us know. Because I think it's cool. Mm hmm I don't know if they... Yeah, the other plants are doing it, too. So... Interesting. Yeah, that that was far out. I just wanted to pick y'all's brain about that. But we'll go up to the upper gardens and finish, wrap this up. All right, we're getting near the end of the video. We're at the bean patch in the upper garden. And these were where the purple beans were. Those are the azbuki beans, or red noodle beans, as most people call them. And beyond them, can you get a shot of those? On the, on the... The yellow bean. Yep. You can see them hanging. Now I know, many of y'all are <sighs> saying, Sam, why didn't you pick these things? They've gone <laughs> way too far. What, what's the matter with you? Well, this is uh, setting myself up for next year. I'm going to let those seeds mature and I'm going to save them and plant them next year. So part of the way I do things is if it's practical, I let let the last portion of the crop go to seed and save it. Is that what you're doing with the noodle beans That's too? what I'm doing with these. See, this is... This is a hoggy bean. That's this, what Sam would call This right a hoggy here bean. is about right, what you want to pick. Yeah. But that will grow into this. And like this one. That grows into this. And the, the gems are on the inside. There's seeds in there. Oh, See? There, there it is. Now that seed's not mature. So I'll leave these on here until they mature and then I'll collect them. Then we'll have seed for next year, which is very important. You know? The seed for the garden's like bullets for a gun. So... That's what I'm doing here. I'm not being negligent. I'm just like a good pool player. Every shot you take, you set up for your next shot. Now, I, wanted to, I did want to show you something over here. Okay, I'm going to try and get under a tree with this camera. There we go. Are you still filming? Uh-huh. These are our strawberries. I thought they all drowned last year, but they made a nice little crop for us this year. I've been keeping the weeds at them. I'm going to give them a little mulch for winter, and they'll be put to bed. But over here is where we had our co collards, cabbage, broccoli, and kale. The greens are up there. There's uh, collards on your left and mm -hmm. kale on the right. And they grew, oh gosh, about three or four feet tall, but then they don't like hot weather. They're a cool season crop. So. I, Instead of pulling them up, I just cut them off close to the ground, and they're sprouting again. Hmm. So I'm doing kind of an experiment here to see if I just leave them alone. I kept the bugs off them to see if they'll give us a fall crop. That'd be good. They'll do well in the cool weather. In fact, they get a little tastier if they get a little frost nip. And as you can see, I cleaned out the chicken house. Oh, is that what that is? That's what that is. That's I'm surprised the dogs aren't bothering it. That's chicken poop. But... My strategy with that, because these are not the best soil, but they're really improving. I put this on and leave it all winter, just like that. I get the weeds out if there's any, but I leave it just like that. And uh, it can snow on it, it can rain on it, it can do whatever it wants. And then in the spring, I just work it in with a, a claw. This is a no-till garden up here. I don't till it. Why don't you till it? Well, because I don't use hand tillers, and look at all the rock. Uh-huh, there is a lot. And it, it's it's just better this way. So, this method with the straw and the mulch in the summer, and this on top of it after years and years, has been really improving the soil in so many ways. Fertility, water holding ability, and just... Like, like we grew some beautiful cabbage and collards mm -hmm, out here, mm -hmm. and no fertilizer except poop. Yeah. So poop is the word. <laughs> it's got mood. It's got meaning. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and poop is the way we are feeling. But anyway, <laughs> with that said.
<laughs> it's time to go. Uh, anyway, thank you all for watching and everything, but be sure and check out Channing's videos and his website, Practical Paracord. He's a good dude. Bye-bye. <laughs>